Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about uh, farming for the Brandon Apocalypse, okay? So a lot of people think that come Armageddon, they're going to go into their backyard, they're going to drop some seeds, and they're going to have food the next day, and they're going to be set. Uh, and as a person that's been doing this for quite a few years now, I can tell you that that's not how it works, okay? Uh, so in this video, we're going to be talking about what it takes to be self-sufficient. Um, now, I mentioned in the prior video, I, I told you guys that if um, industrialized food production uh, is interrupted, and the way you, that would get interrupted is simply by cutting off the fuel supply. Because if that tractor back there doesn't get diesel, and it uses a lot of diesel, it can't do any of this work over here. Okay, uh, This is very different than back in the 1940s, where uh, a lot of the you know, farms were... Um, you know, you know, they, they, they a lot, you know, people like in Europe were still farming with with animals, right? Because I had family in Europe, um, you know, the uh, part of Europe where my family originates from. They were invaded by the Germans. There was an, uh, a war in their country. However, in their particular area, uh, there was no war, and they were hardly affected by it because everything was very localized. Okay, they didn't depend on any fuel or anything coming from uh outside of their town um so everything was very isolated they weren't affected by the war much at all okay i mean obviously they were affected a little bit but they really weren't affected much as far as their food production today that would be completely different because everybody over there in that same town and i've been there um you know in, in recent years everybody has tractors that run on deals on diesel right and they don't pump diesel in that town so they depend on that fuel from to come from somewhere else and same situation if uh there was a war those tractors would all stop working and um uh and basically they wouldn't be able to do any farming and the farmers will will starve just as as, as fast as everybody else and it's not like you can just switch it right over because a lot of this equipment that you see over here right that's meant to be pulled by the tractor well, you can't just hook that up to a horse, right? There's, there's, there's quite a, you know, the, the, you know, there's, there's quite a, a chain. There's quite a, a, a lot of modifications that are involved, uh, and it's not likely you would be able to do it fast enough. Uh, because here's the thing with farming, um, the, you know, all the work has to be done um, in a very specific time window, um, which is, you know, I mean, you might think that, hey, you know, you got plenty of time between, you know, uh, April and May to do your farming work, right? But here's the thing, uh, in spring, what do we get? Lots of rain, right? You can't do this work when the ground is wet. So there's very few days between May, uh, between April and May, where the ground is dry enough for long enough where you can, where, when you can do this work, okay? So that, that's an important consideration. The, the weather uh, severely limits when you can do this work in that, two month period okay so let's talk about what's involved with uh, planting for self-sufficiency um it uh first thing i'm going to say is how much land you need okay uh it takes about an acre to feed one person all right uh so you need uh to farm about one acre uh to feed one each member of your family uh how much is an acre well the average suburban uh house uh, the average sub suburban uh, property, right, with uh, a house, front yard, backyard, is about half an acre, okay? Um, so you need two times that amount of land to feed every person in your household, okay? So that's how much uh, land is required to become self-sufficient um, from, from farming, okay? Um, so now you can cheat this a little bit. There are ways to cheat this, okay? So over here I got a whole bunch of chickens. Uh, chickens are really good because um, you can see them like they're pecking in the ground over there digging for worms so especially in the summertime um, they can provide a lot of the food for themselves just by digging into the into the ground but that's only going to be about half the food okay uh, maybe even less than half the food you have to supplement them and through the winter time right which are the hardest months and the, and, and the ground is frozen uh, they you know they're not you have to provide almost 100% of their food through the winter. Uh, now, if you, if you, let's say I didn't have this area fenced in, if I just let these chickens run loose, uh, they could probably, in the summer times, right, they could probably 
go into the woods over there and find enough seed and live, you know, 100% off of the land. The problem is that the foxes would eat them all uh, in a very short period of time and none of them would be alive. Okay, so um, you, you have to pretty much keep your chickens fenced in. Um, and here's the thing, the, the smaller the fence area is, the, the easier it is to protect them. Uh, at one point I had tried expanding this fence area and what happened is the foxes were a lot more comfortable with, with jumping over the fence. Normally they go under the, underneath the fence, but I had this one acrobat that would like jump like, that's a four foot fence and he would, he would jump over that fence with a chicken in his mouth, okay? Um, so once in a while you get acrobat. So here's the thing, the closer the fence, the chickens are to your house, uh, the more, you know, the more cautious the predators are going to be. Um, as you extend it further out to get them, let's say, closer to those woods over there, uh, the more comfortable, because basically the foxes go, go back and forth in, in, in that tree line over there looking for opportunities to, to get close, okay? So, so that, that's, that's how that works, okay? So, uh, now the plan here, okay, because I said, remember, it takes one acre to support one person in your family. The plan here... Uh, is rather than using the land to directly feed, you know, the, the farming to directly feed me, what I want to do is I want to grow food to feed the chickens, and then the chickens feed me. Okay, so so that that is the plan here, um, and 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 chickens are very probably one of the most efficient animals for doing that type of thing because if you've got let's say a goat or something, right, a goat can eat through um, an, an acre. In, in, in a month, you know, a cow will eat through an acre in a week, basically, all right? So, so, so chickens are very good in the sense that they, you know, you, you can support them with a lot less food. They provide eggs on a regular basis. You can eat the chickens themselves. Um, so the thing is with, um, the thing with farming is that if you, like there's, there's, there's certain things that you're gonna farm that have a better chance of, of lasting year long. So like corn. You know that can last a longer period of time. If you're, if you're if you're farming tomatoes, I mean obviously tomatoes are soft. You know they gotta be more or less eaten within a, a week or two, otherwise they, they 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 rot. Okay, so certain things that you're gonna farm uh, don't last very long. Other things that you farm um, are gonna last longer. Um, you know, so so potatoes high in protein. That's that's a good thing to farm. Corn is something that uh, is is it, you know la will last that you can store. And chickens love corn. You can feed it to the chickens, support your, your chickens. So this whole area here, which is about I don't know some some eighty six some eighty by eighty feet. Okay, this is all corn uh, in that area over there. Uh, that's mostly pumpkins. All right, but I do have some watermelons, squash. Um, eggplants in there, so I do have a couple of other things in there. But the but the pumpkins are good because they'll last uh, for for you know at least a month or two. Um, they do they do tend to rot after a while. Um, so 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 the corn is great because that can almost last throughout the whole winter, and you can basically store that right, and you can feed the chickens, and then the chickens can feed you. So that that's a, that's a good thing to grow. Um, so, and, and by doing that, right, I don't have to grow as much, right? So, so, you know, if I have, let's say five people in my family, I don't need to, to actually farm five acres because, um, I can do less farming to feed the chickens and then the chickens will produce food to feed me. Okay. So, uh, and, and it, exactly how much uh, is something I'm still trying to figure out. Uh, I've been doing this for about eight years and it's a, it's a continual learning process, um, in the past, when I was doing this uh, light farming here, uh, it was most, mostly for the purpose of just providing some supplemental vegetables for myself. I wasn't doing it for the purpose of making the chickens self-sufficient. Now, this year, I'm actually going at it with the intention of making those chickens um, uh, you know, self-sufficient off this land. Okay, So that, that's the goal I'm working towards now. Uh, and I, I finally got... Uh, the, in, the the right equipment to do this. Uh, in the past, I did it with with you know I had the same tractor, but the equipment that I had on the back wasn't uh, wasn't ideal, and uh, you know it made the work a lot more difficult. The biggest problem I had was I had to figure out because I figured you know I had a a, a plow for breaking the dirt, um, and I was able to put seeds in there, but I didn't have a good method of getting the weeds out, right? Because what's going to happen is when, when you plant, okay, 
Um, there's, you know, I mean, let's say I put corn in here. Well, there's other things in the, there's other seeds in the ground already, right? Besides the corn seeds that you put in there, mainly the, the grass seeds. And they're going to start coming up and they're going to start, you know, taking away nutrition and basically drowning out your, whatever you plant in there. Uh, so I, I had, a, I've been working to try and figure out a way to deal with that. And I, I think I finally got that figured out. We're going to talk about that here today. Um, so the, there's three levels of planting, uh, of farming, right? There's industrial, where you're doing, you know, large scale. And they use completely different equipment, uh, not just the tractor itself, but also the stuff that goes on the back of the tractor and the way that they plant. Because if you look over here, okay, um, I have a row over here in the middle. And then on the side, I have the tire tracks, all right? So you don't plant where the tire tracks are. So, and the tires on that tractor are 18 inches wide. So, so basically uh, there's, you know, all these rows where the tires go is an area that you can't plant in, okay? So that's, that's very inefficient as far as the use of the land. And that's why in, in industrialized farming, that's not the way they farm. Uh, there's basically no space between the, um, there's no space between the rows, right? Everything is just plant packed, you know, pa uh, planted really tight. Uh, and after they plant, they really don't have a need to go through it because what they do is they basically put weed killer um, on the ground to kill the weeds, right? Um, so that so so that that grass won't grow. And then they use seed that is basically genetically enhanced seeds that is resistant to that weed killer. Okay, so that's not what I'm doing here, right? So that works good for industrialized farming. I mean, that's 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 what they do. Um, uh, so I, I need a, a different method that's not reliant on that. So the other, so, so three levels of farming, you got industrial farming, um, you've got uh, basically the, you know, uh, you know, suburban backyard farming, right? Where your wife or your mom might plant a few things in a, uh, uh, in, in, in let's say a, a 20 by 20 area in your backyard a um, couple of differences there obviously you're doing it on a much smaller scale all right um, and here's the thing most of those suburban properties um, when they do the construction over there they bring in topsoil right so so the, the, the soil that you will typically have is not rocky okay um, now this land over here um, is 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 was previously farmed okay so, so I, I, I keep coming off track. So three levels of farming. We'll get back to the soil in a second. Three levels of farming. Industrial, the s tiny, small-scale suburban backyard farming, right? That's basically hobby, you know, just, just hobby planting, really. And then there's what I'm trying to do here, which is uh, small-scale family farming, okay? So we're going to focus on this. So this land was previously farmed, right? So as you can see, there, there's rocks and stuff in the ground, okay? Um so this is very different than if you're trying to farm in a suburban backyard, which is not going to have lots of rocks like that. Um, so you, you, know, you need a machine that can pull a plow that's going to pull through those rocks. Now, you could also have land like I, I got in the back over there that's raw, never been farmed. That ground is full of big rocks. All right. And it's also going to have roots, right? Roots from old trees that maybe died, you know, a decade or two ago. Uh, that's the roots are still going to be in there. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of work to turn that land back there into, into you know, to make that land back there farmable. So this land over here, right? You can see this grass area over here. This was previously farmed. So, you know, basically this is ready to be farmed, but you still need, uh, a respectable equipment because the ground is the ground is going to have some things like you know is going to have like rocks that are somewhere between six and eight inches uh in size okay okay so uh let's talk about how we go about uh farming this well first thing we got to do is we got to break the ground okay now to do that we need a plow a plow that's going to go on the back of that tractor now that's a 38 horsepower tractor um horsepower is very different than what's in your cars uh, you really can't compare the horsepower of a tractor to the horsepower of a of a car because they're, you know, it's just I mean, you could compare the, the horsepower of one tractor to another tractor or the horsepower of one car to another car, but you can't compare the horsepower of a tractor to a car. It's completely the gears are completely different. Everything is just just you know the leverage. Everything is different. So that's a, that's a that's a, like a, 
what we what they call a compact tractor. So what I'm going to do with the, with that tractor initially, I hook this plow over here, and that breaks this plow right here. That breaks the ground, um, brings up the soil from the bottom more towards the surface. Okay, um, so that's the first step, right? I got to plow the ground, and then what I'll do is I'll take some of the chicken poop and I'll mix it in there. Like I'll clean out the chicken poop, spread that into the area over there. And that's going to serve as my fertilizer. With industrial farming, they do a lot. They put in a lot of fertilizer. You know, basically they, you know, they they make as they seed it, they fertilize it. I don't do that here, right? So I I mostly depend on the nutrients that are already in the ground and whatever I can supplement from the chickens. So the next step after I plow and drop some chicken poop in there, I'm going to run through it with this disc harrow over here. And the purpose of this is to kind of chop up the ground because there's going to be lots of clumps, right? There's going to be some, you know, like grass clumps because the roots from the grass are going to kind of uh, hold everything together, right? So you, you got to run this, run through with the disc carol. What happens is you got these, these rotating blades that work against each other and they chop up the ground. Uh, a lot of times people will use a, a tiller which is PTO driven, right? So there's a shaft coming out of a tractor that turns the tiller. I didn't want to, I, I considered getting a tiller. I didn't want to do that because I have lots of rocks in the ground here and there's a, be, there's a higher chance that the rocks would do damage to the tiller. Uh, that's why I elected to go with the, with the disc harrow, which is ground driven. So there's, no, there's nothing from the engine that actually turns those blades. You just pull it along uh, and the, ro the blades, ro you know, the ground rotates the blades as you pull it and it chops up the dirt, okay? So there's it, uh, it less of a chance that the rocks that would damage this thing. Uh, not that it can't get damaged, but less, less of a chance. Um, so that's the next thing you need. Uh, you, you, need this, you need a disc harrow or, or a tiller or something to chop up the ground, okay? Uh, and again, when you do this, the ground has to be pretty dry, okay? And it, it rains, like right this time of year, it rains like almost five out of seven days. You know, so so it's 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 a matter like I, like I wanted to do this like a month ago, but I couldn't do it because I just couldn't get the the ground dry enough. It's now you know basically we're at the middle of almost towards the end of May, and I finally got everything uh, planted that I want to get planted because I just couldn't get enough days with the with the right weather. Okay, so you go through it with the disc harrow, chop it up. Okay, then I'm going to go through it with this garden better. Okay, the garden better is what's going to make the rows. So you've got those two discs there, right? Right. So these two discs is what's going to bring up the, 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 the rows. And then what's going to happen is this furrowing attachment here, right? As the, when the row comes up, that's going to create a line that I can then go and, and easily drop my seeds, right? Because here's the thing. Uh, after you make your rows, now you don't want to, you know, you don't want to have to go through a large acre, you know, a, a large area like that and, and put your seeds in one by one you know, uh, by hand, okay? Because there's probably, I don't know, something like uh, 2,000 seeds in there, all right? So you don't, you, you don't want to do that, you know, you, you know, you don't want to do that by hand. You need a way to quickly drop your seeds. Because um, remember, you know, it, it rains like every other day. So, um, you, you know, you don't have the time to do it. I mean, even if you're not working, the weather won't give you the time to do it, all right? Even if you don't have anything else to do, it's just, you know, you, you're working against the weather. So that furring attachment over there is going to create a line. And I, I demonstrated this in a previous video. If you look up using the garden better, there's two videos you guys should look up. One is, look up my channel name and then disc harrow, all right? Everything attachments, disc harrow to see how I use the disc harrow. And then look up everything attachments, uh, garden better, all right? That's the GB60 to see how I set this up and use this, okay? Um, so the discs are gonna make the are gonna make the row. They're gonna raise it. They're gonna raise it up. The furring attachment in the back is gonna cut the line where I can drop my seeds. And then these two sweeps on the side here, right? This one and that one. That's gonna basically um, uh, because what's gonna happen is that that's gonna run with a tire with a, with the tires of the tractor off, and the the tractor weighs like something like six seven thousand pounds. Uh, that's gonna compact the ground. Okay. That uh, those 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 um, those tines over there are going to basically loosen it up and and soften it up. Okay. Uh, now one of the things I found is that you I do have to kind of go through this at a, at a decent speed uh, because I, I had to in the video I discussed about getting the right width. I got to go through it fast enough so that the um, 
that that the, the, the dirt is actually like kind of thrown towards the center. Um, when I tried making it more narrow, it didn't quite work out as well. So for this dirt that I have here, which is thick, rocky soil, that, that's the position that, that seemed uh, to work the best for me, okay? Um, so after I uh, go through with the uh, uh, with, with the with this uh, garden better, uh, the final step is the cedar, which I have over here. <laughs> so with the cedar, basically this is the I think Earthwork cedar. Uh, it costs like a hundred dollars per each. You know, basically I put my seeds there. There's uh, I said there's a, I put a disc in here for the different side seeds, and you just push this along that line that the garden better creates and then as you push it along it drops a seed okay and then what i do is i just go through it manually you know once the seeds are in i just i just grab a hand rake and i go through with the hand rake i walk down the row and i just i just pull the dirt over and i cover it up and that's the reason why you can no, no you can no longer see the rows the, the lines in at the top of the rows uh, and that's because after i put the seeds in uh, I covered it up with the rake. Okay, so that is the planting process. Now, with the commercial, with the industrial farming, right, they use, uh, a, after they go through with the disc harrow, because it, the plowing, they do the plowing, uh, they use basically a, a bigger version of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the disc harrow, or they use a bigger, ver or a bigger tiller. That part's, the, you know, you know, um, well, actually, they go through with the plow, so I'm going to break up the ground. Then they'll go through with the with the disc harrow or with the tiller. And what they do is with the, when they seed it, they use a planter. And the, and the planter goes on the back of the tractor. Um, and it does basically the bedding and the seeding in one step, right? So it creates the bed, and then it drops the seed. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, the size that would go... On the back of this tractor, I mean, I think it costs like two thousand dollars, you know. Uh, and then on the tractor, this size, you could actually put like two or three of them on it, you know. Um, so if, if I wanted to, like, like, like right now, I'm trying to, like, right here, right here, I got about a quarter acre. I maybe got another quarter acre over there that I'm that I'm planning on. But if I decided to uh, down the road, once I get this completely debugged and it's working out great, if I decide to expand this, right. If I'm going to be planting, let's say, more than two acres, all right, uh, then I would, uh, because then I, if I'm doing two acres, I don't want to go through it pushing this this uh, this uh, bicycle garden, garden better. At that point, I would look to upgrading to putting a cedar on the back of the track. Um, so there you go. There's a couple of ideas of, of um, how to farm to be self-sufficient. Uh, in a Biden apocalypse type of situation. Uh, and my plan is to basically uh, get the chickens self-sufficient, you know, uh, grow enough corn to feed the chickens and then the chickens can feed me. Um, you know, one of the things I've mentioned in other videos in a true, in, in a situation where the, where, where the diesel, where the fuel is cut off and the farmers can't plant fuel and they can't do industrialized farming, so that the people can eat. There's only going to be two sources of, of food, all right? And it's not going to be deer. The deer are all going to disappear, all right? The two sources of food are going to be, um, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, for most people, it's not going to be farming because they're not going to be prepared for this. The two main sources of food are going to be human meat and dog meat, okay? Because people are going to end up eating people, and that's happened many times throughout history. Uh, just look up uh, Cannibal Island in Siberia where Stalin had put people on a prison island without providing food for them, and they started eating each other. Right? People do that. Rats do that. That's, that's a pretty normal reaction uh, um, in a reality, right? People, you know, the, 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 the urge to, to, to survive um, is, is very dominant, okay? Um, so two sources of, uh, of food are going to be human meat and uh, dog meat because what's going to happen is the dogs... Uh, are going to eat the human corpses and they're going to uh, prosper. They're going to do very well. They're going to multiply. So one of the options will be to hunt wild dogs and eat them. Um, okay, so that's, that's you know, unless you plan otherwise, unless you're doing something like this, and this takes a lot of planning, takes years of practice, right? Because I'm still, I'm still working at getting this perfect. Um, 
you know, if you don't have this with the chickens and, the, and some and some farm to land to, some land to farm on, um, and the thing is, again, if I can't get diesel into that tractor, I, well, I wouldn't be able to do this anyway. I'd have to resort to those other two options myself. Okay. Uh, the cool thing is that the chickens will eat anything. They will eat human meat. All right. <laughs> if you lay down on the ground motionless, they will come over to you and start pecking at you, trying to eat your eyes. Okay, uh, chickens are, are basically miniature T-Rexes, right? They will eat anything. They are merciless. They'll eat each other. Uh, my neighbor had a chicken that was hit by a, a car out in the road. Then all the other chickens came out and started eating that, that you know, that, the, you know the, the flattened out chicken. <laughs> they started eating it. So chickens are merciless. They'll eat anything. They'll eat each other. They will eat human meat. All right, so that's 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 the reality so i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, drop some comments below i hope it was uh, both informative and entertaining for you guys because part of my goal is also uh, you know aside from providing information is also to provide entertainment for you guys so let me know what you guys think drop some comments like and subscribe uh, make sure you guys follow me on odyssey which is an uncensored platform uh, my channel name over there is pocono tactical all right and uh, odyssey is spelled o-d-y-s-e-e.com. -E I'll talk to you all soon.